One first question to all of you. How old I am? The guess is like 20, 21, 22. Yeah, now I got the right answers. Like I'm just 17. Coming from a small town in Odisha, where education and the aspirations of a child revolves around this pattern set up from ages. Study, get a job, or start a business, get married, and start a family made me realize that I was out of place. I was not going to follow those conventional pathways. The fire of curiosity to explore the value of education for human beings could not hold me there anymore. Questions like, what am I doing here? Am I there to do the same what others do? Made me ask my parents to leave me to Kota for quality education in the field of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Just imagine a 14-year lad requesting his parents, Papa, Mama, I want to go to Kota. It was quite surprising in it only. But the courage and the confidence shown by my parents in permitting me to leave my native place and go and settle somewhere else, which is around 1,500 miles from my home, was commendable. And that is how I set off on the voice for my knowledge and creativity. Having full of cognizance about the failures and the risks involved in it. I didn't go to Kota for any preparation of competitive exams though. My primary motive behind was that to blend in and converse with the best brains of the nation. Yes, you heard it right. The best brains. And the best place is Kota, be in the form of mentors or students. The hot and dry air I could still feel today, which hit me first when I stepped down on the platform one of Kota Railway Station. The new faces and the new culture didn't make any difference to me because my primary motive was just to gain knowledge and be cognizant. I witnessed the rat race of toppers for marks, but none for creativity. This and the poor connectivity problems of Kota made me shift to the pink city, Jaipur. Nowadays, I am based in Jaipur. Jaipur is well connected with the rest of the world, providing me a free transition from IIT Roorkee, IGI Bidelli, and my school in Jaipur. It not only enabled me to have a lot of time, but also a stress-free journey. Coming to my research, Life is something which I call it's very diverse. So my research is, I work like a developer, developing optimized solar cells, developing new therapeutic methods for curing cancer, discovering new drugs for the rarest genetic disease, and developing mobile apps like Sozu, which could save road accident victims. I know it looks really diverse, but yes, this is my range of research. A small connectivity is there among all this, which I like, took an objective of my life to develop technology-enabled based solutions put, to put an end in, for the medical ailments and daily problems of mankind. The connecting bridge among all this is known to be as AI. A very familiar name, artificial intelligence, 
Today, we are all honored to be surrounded with the devices using artificial intelligence. They not only saved our time, but also a lot of valuable resources. During my days at IGIB, I was involved in a project which aimed to discover new drugs for the treatment of cystic fibrosis. As usual, I was given the last but most critical stage. From the experimental team, they gave us 1,500 or more characters for that protein. And they were ready to make it a pattern for the drugs which are going to be found in the drug bank. There, I developed a new machine learning model based on the active points from that characters. Then, I scanned each and every drug from the drug bank, out of which I filtered many, then shifted to the next stage that is called docking. In docking, we virtually dock those filtered drugs and check are they fit to attack or not. See, after all these stages, we came to a place where we have only five to 10 drugs to get the final reports. This is what AI can do. From more than 3,000 drugs, we are at a stage of only five to 10 drugs to test for the final reports. Let's shift our focus from medical sciences to material sciences. Likewise, from IGIB to IIT Roodkey. There, after a long discussion with my supervisor, since my always motive was to give for the humanity, I developed a new software which could predict the quantum efficiency of the solar cells with very minimal information. For example, just with the information like what is the material and the composition, we could predict what is the quantum efficiency of the solar cells. And the surprising thing is like to accuracy of more than 95%, which is quite a large. In this field, when I was working, I found that this research was really valuable for the solar cell researchers because they could easily eliminate those inefficient material compositions which were out there. This was just a glimpse of AI in both the fields. Am I stopping here? No. The answer is a no. After losing both my grandmothers to cancer, I made a strong commitment to me that I won't rest until I develop a new therapeutic method that could cure cancer. Initially, it was really tough job for me because none was there to support me. And as a small 10th class student, I didn't know about the real physics behind it and also the difficult formulas. Gradually, when my interest heightened, and with some success with it, many people started coming. OK, Savesh, so you're doing great. We could help now. I still remember why they don't come while I was starting. This is the world, my friends. You should start to show some success. Then only people will attract to you, all as they want. This project is like having a biocomposite material that is chromium docked peroxide we use that to ingest in the body and with the help of the electromagnetic waves the subsequent temperature increase was made in the body which helped us to make the cancerous cells more susceptible yes you heard it right when we heat an area where there is cancer cells, we, that those become really susceptible. So what we can do is now, is like we use those conventional treatments like chemotherapy and radiotherapy to start the treatment with very minimal doses that won't affect our normal cells. 
And finally, we were successful in treating cancer, cancer cells without affecting those millions or trillions of normal and healthy cells. I'm really proud of this. It is an honor for me today to stand in front of all of you to share these exciting project ideas. But I have something great for you, a new revolutionary idea, an undone idea, a new project, which is not done even by me also. It's just a scrap idea, but it aimed to treat the rarest disease to the most common disease in humankind at the gene level. I named them as my favorite species, ants. So it's a great question now everybody will be thinking, what is an ant? What can it do? Friends, an ant is the most hardworking species on this planet. I named my nano sophisticated by robots as ants. They will get ingested to our body and will go through the pathways to the DNA and the genes. With the help of the complete human genome project, they will act as a DNA polymerize where they will find the substances required from nearby places and make new nucleotides and join them out and replace those defective parts. This project would not only aim to cure the disease at once, but for generations. Then a nice question. I'm a 17 year guy. What motivates me to do all this? My friends, it is nothing. Just my favorite or best friend, I would say. You want to know who is my best friend? My best friend is going to come now. Rejected by 11 publishers all over the world to publish my first book. Failed in getting any rank in the SIP international competition. Failed in getting accepted to the state debate team and many more. I call them my failures. Fa failures with a big S is what success. This is what success is, my friends. Failures are really important in life because they not only teach us what is the method to win, but also they make us strong. Every successful person has a failure in his bag, but they are successful because they knew how to face those failures. So after a lot of failures, like I would say, people come to me and ask, Sovesh, what is the thing that make you still a champion? I told them that. It is not the outer force that made me champion. Every day, I generally believe that I am a champion. Not on the basis of this phenomenal research frame of mine or any sort of honors like getting a president medal, going to a lot of places, invited by, for a lot of big speakers, but it's the thing that I do. I generally am happy and satisfied with whatever I do. Before going to bed, if I'm not satisfied, then that day is a waste day for me. While traveling to Manipal as an avid reader, I just have a few lines for all of you. Remember, your excuses are the seducers. Your fears are the liars. Your doubts are the thieves. So that's all from Sovesh Mahapatra. Thank you.